Hey folks, welcome to the very first episode of Season 2 of My Knife Plays Terra Firmacraft, or TFC. I'll leave it to your imagination to figure out who I am. Um, you'll notice, those of you who saw my first season, it was called Terra Farmercraft because I wasn't eating any meat from any animals, uh, not because of moral objections, just because it made it a little more interesting. Uh, I won't be doing that this season because uh, I'm playing version uh, 0.78, of the Terra Firma Craft mod and it's had a lot of changes especially around food and hunger and stuff like that and uh, it's a lot more difficult to find food now uh, but the other thing is that there's some new mechanics around how you store meat and things like that that I want to play around with and uh, so it makes sense then to be able to have some meat around so without further ado let's get into it um, Oh, it's my test world. We're creating a new world. Okay. Uh, so one of the things I will be doing... Uh, let's see. Season 2. There we go. Um, game mode survival. More world options. I always turn cheats on just in case something goes wrong. Okay. Um, I'll show you what the... I'll be playing on hostile initially. Or sorry, on hard mode. So with mobs and everything at its hardest level until I get a bed and then once I get a bed then I'm just going to turn mobs off I may turn them back on if I go splunking or something like that but certainly when I'm on the surface I just once you have a bed the mobs are kind of pointless so I just don't want to be bothered with them um what else is there oh um I'm gonna have to let's get out of here just quickly there we go uh just make sure everything's right yeah, difficulty is hard Yeah, that should be good. Okay, just before we go back, um, I'm going to have to move pretty quickly on this first day if I want to be able to survive the night. Um, I could run into problems of thirst which for reasons which you'll see shortly. Um, I could easily starve to death and then of course I have to get myself some, uh, some digs to protect myself from the mobs. So let's see if we can't hit the ground. We're running here. Okay, so where do we end? We got some chert. Okay, now if we run into any, you'll see that there have been a bunch of changes with the way that uh, minerals or minerals ores work as well. Is it used to be you could only ever find ores from the top rock level on the surface? Uh, now that's not true. You can find ores from all levels on the surface, which is really cool because it means like you can find iron on the surface and gold and silver and all that stuff. Uh, does mean though that if you find you know some tetrahedrite or something on the surface you're no longer reassured that it's just a very short distance below the surface it could in fact be way down in level in layer three okay all right well that's enough rocks for now i need sticks sticks and trees okay there's trees in that direction there's squat all in that direction let's go in this direction okay here's a new thing here uh, you'll see these cattails here. They indicate fresh water. And if I, well, my thirst bar isn't down very much, but if I stand in the fresh water, I can drink. Um, but there's also salt water. And salt water you cannot quench your thirst in. Oh, and that's another thing. See the dirt fell away here? There are these, what we call pits of death. Now, and I actually, yeah, you know, I, I think the pits of death are kind of a neat idea. However, they occur far, far too frequently in the world. Like that was one there. There's another pit of death over there. It's like there's probably going to be one right in there. They're just, they're just way too common right now. It's, you know, our ancestors would never have, you know, survived uh, crawling out of the water if, uh, if there'd been those kinds of, that kind of death awaiting them everywhere they turned. Okay, so I need sticks still. So to the forest we go. So I'm going to see if I can see some other things to show you here. All right, well, let's just get ourselves some sticks first. Oh, 
Okay, should be able to see. You can now actually find sticks lying on the ground, too. I would have thought we'd have seen some around here. Oh, here's one here. And uh, I'm told there tend to be more frequent near the water. I haven't partic particularly noticed that, but then I haven't actually played 78 a lot yet. Um, and the main reason, main driving reason behind that is because you can end up in some rather large biomes that are treeless. And if you have, if that gives you no access to sticks and you're just going to die. Uh, <laughs> You can't get sticks right away. So even in a treeless biome, especially if you go down near the water, you'll find, you, sh you can usually find some sticks lying on the ground you can pick up and at least get started on your first set of tools, stone tools. Okay. What am I doing? 22, that's got to be enough. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need, whoops. What are you doing, my Need knives. There we go. Okay. Uh, second, we're going to need a shovel. Hopefully I can find some clay. Thirdly, if we get lucky, we'll find some game. So let's have a couple of spears handy. Since knives don't do... Or it seems to me, at any rate, that knives do not do the sort of damage they did be. Oh, screwed it up. Screwed that one up, too. There we go. Uh, it seems to me that knives don't do nearly as much damage as they used to. Either that or <laughs> everything's gotten tougher than it used to be. Um, so the spears now still tend to actually be the weapon of choice at the start. Okay. So let's start collecting up some of this stuff. We need a lot of it. Make the thatch blocks for our starting home. And is this fresh water here? Yes, this is fresh water here, so we can just make our home here. That's good. See any, we haven't seen any ores yet on the ground, which is uh, a little disappointing, I don't mind saying. Probably need at least two knives worth of this stuff. Ah, look at that. We got, uh, there we go, that's the first knife worth. Also have to. Oh, we're already past noon, and I still want to pick up some clay, which is right here. So we'll do that. Might as well do that now since we're here. And I want to get some trees as well, or some logs, so I can, while we're waiting out the night, I can uh, at least start firing up my first uh, clayware or ceramics, ceramicware. I don't know what you call it. Six, that's enough for five. Let's do a little bit more here. Yeah, see? Here, come back here. See? Another death pit under there, so that's hollow under here, yeah, you can see part of it from over here. So I mean they're just everywhere. It's too bad, too much. Have to go into the code into the code for the mod and see if I can't crank that down a bit. Now part of the thing is is that be, the world gen has changed quite a bit. So one part of it is that um, a lot of times ravines don't break the surface. So the death pit that you're... Oh, there we go. That's enough. So, you know, the, the death pit is the result of uh, 
of just a ravine formed and then it was just under the surface layer so it's just being covered by a thin layer of dirt. Oh, uh, I want a... Uh, oh, I didn't make an axe yet. And the other thing is there's these things called hot springs now, which they look really cool, especially close up. Um, and they, they don't have too much of a purpose right now, although I believe they are fresh water, another source of fresh water. Um, but eventually they'll be a way of, one of the ways that you can keep warm once body temperatures, once all the body temperature code is in. All right. I would like to get one of these guys here, one of these big trees that's only a single wide. Yeah, he's too small. Oh well, you take what you can get. And so the other thing that, that happens with them as well is you end up with these um, hot springs and they form just below the surface and so they too are covered by a thin layer of, uh, of dirt. Okay, how many of these logs do I have? Eight. Uh, I'd like a few more. A few more than that. Yeah, so in addition to the like death pits that were put there to actually you know, kind of trip you up and make you fall in, you're also getting the sort of accidental death pits from ravines and the accidental death pits from uh, hot springs. So it all gets to be a bit much. Oh, that's the other thing I want to do. I want to get some gravel. Because they have now fixed panning. Although, like I say, we didn't see any... I uh, haven't seen any ores in the area, so I don't know whether there's anything for panning to actually find here. Okay, let's get to that time when we have to actually build our home for the night. And let's just take this out of here. Oops. And that's perfect. Okay. Okay. place. All right. I thought it, I put it over the wall. Hmm. Well, gotta be safe. There we go. Ah, okay. Whew. Oh, but we didn't find food. <laughs> That's going to be a problem. Um, I'll show you other stuff once I get the uh, pit kiln going. Well, let's get my stuff organized here. Okay, that's there. I guess that's all I need for now. Okay, now the pit kilns used to have to be two deep. Now they only have to be one deep. Uh, let's make up our stuff here. We're going to want a clay vessel. We're going to want a water jug and a second water jug just in case the first one breaks really early on since that would be, could have deadly consequences for us. And then another clay vessel because we're going to end up using a lot of clay vessels. Actually, I haven't even looked where we are, but the presence of the jungle tells me we're in tropical areas, which means they're, f well, we're not that far. Oh yeah, um, minus 578, eh, semi-tropical, I guess. 
but that probably means that we'll have year-round uh, growing seasons. So now what happens is you 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 only dig the uh, the pit kiln one block deep. You put your unfired clay objects in there, and then you fill up the bottom half of the pit with eight straw. Now uh, you don't have to use sixteen like you used to. And similarly, and then you lay on top of that just eight logs. And you're not right clicking or anything, or sorry, you are right clicking, but you're no shift, you don't have to shift or anything. In fact, if you shift, you'll create a log pile. And, and then we take that and we set it on fire. I hope. There we go. Took a few shots. And there we go. All right, now we got a bit of light and a little bit of time to kill. Oh, I know what else I can do. I still have a log here. Oh, I need a new knife. Oh, it's not a knife. Uh, it's a knife. Actually, that's an old enough movie that maybe few, if any of you, remember it. Okay. Okay, so we take a log up here, apply a knife to it, we get some bowls. Take one of those bowls, put it back through again, and we get a gold pan. I uh, don't need that, don't need that up here. Might as well move that up to there. Okay, and we also need some running water. To rinse the gold pan in and then we need some gravel so we grab the gravel let's see if I can get it right and then we right click it like we right click the pan on the gravel and then we like right click the uh, gravel f why is this not working for me right now it's just working. All right, let's come out here where I'm... There we go. And it looks like you get five rinses. Each time you fill up your uh, pan, you get like five rinses. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Five attempts to try and get something. Oh, we're having no luck here. Oh, we did just get something. Oh no, it went outside? Oh, don't tell me it went outside. The one thing I have noticed is that when you're using the... Um, yeah, oh geez, it went outside. I wonder if I can... I wonder if I can get it back. Okay, maybe it's just my imagination. Yeah, but the one thing I've noticed when using the gold pan is anything that you get from your panning, it just like flies off like crazy. And so you can like end up, I'm, I'm afraid what's going to happen is that they're going to, any that I find are going to end up flying actually outside of the hut. And then despawn before morning. Yeah, so the big mechanic, or, well, the, there's lots of them, but uh, one of the big changes in, uh, for B-78 is that food now spoils, it decays over time. And the hotter it is, like the warmer the ambient temperature is, the faster it decays. And different foods decay at different speeds. Oh, I thought I saw something there. Um, you'll also notice here that when you go into your... Um, <coughs> When you go into your inventory now, there's these tabs on the side. So this top tab is just your regular inventory. Uh, this one here shows you your skill levels. I have no skills in anything yet. Uh, this is just the old calendar, time and calendar, time and date uh, window that used to be off of the end button, or the end key, was its default binding. And then this tells you uh, what your nutrient levels are. 
And the way this works is each nutrient level provides you with one-fifth of your hit points, uh, whatever your hit points are currently at. So, <clears throat> or, yeah, one-fifth one of your maximum hit points, I should say. And so I think you start the game with 1,000 hit points, so you're getting 200 hit points from each of these categories. So once one of these guys drops down to zero, even, you know, even if you're fully fed and everything else, you're only, at best, you're going to have, you know, four-fifths of your hit points. And early on in the game, it's typically you won't have any dairy, you may not have any protein, you probably won't have any grain. At best, you'll have fruit and vegetables. So you're looking at having only like, you know, two-fifths, 40% of your your max hit points ever. So it can be, uh, it's a bit of a, uh, what do we say, an incentive to go around and hunt and try and get a well-rounded diet. Uh, right now my diet is uh, round as in the shape of zero. There we go. See? See that? See? See, we got a native copper nugget. Yay! Now we just need nine more of those. So there's some copper around here somewhere. Yeah, so the fact that food rots and, you know, means that you can't just, you know, go and kill a pig or a cow and then gather up all the uh, meat and cook it up and then that's it for the rest of the game. Uh, because oh, we're up to two. Uh, because that food, especially if you're seeing here in like this, oh, it's almost day good. In the semi-tropics, it'll uh, spoil pretty quickly. You know, and as I mentioned again, is fruit spoils relatively quickly as well. And you want your fruit for your well-rounded meal. Okay, that's the end of that block. Uh, soon we'll get to find out if there are any chickens in the area. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to look at the time. Well, it's five o'clock. Because the roosters now crow and they make an ungodly sound when they crow. Okay. I'll do one more of these. Oh, that's it. All right. Well, we only got two copper nuggets out of that, but it at least allowed me to demonstrate to you. Okay, so now I have my ceramic jug. At least I can carry some water around with me. Come on. So I may die of thirst, but... Or, sorry, rather, I may die of hunger, but I'm not going to die of thirst. And I haven't got much I want to store in these guys at the moment, so I'll just bring them around with me. All right. Okay. Are there any mobs out here? Apparently not. Okay, first order of business is we have to find food. Oh, man. Uh, I don't see anything that looks like crops are going to be our best bet. I mean, animal will be okay. Well, I do have, I have two spears on me, so it might not be too difficult to kill an animal. They get awfully skittish now, though. Oh, there's something over here. Oh, crap, Galena. Yeah, see, oh, th but this shows what I mean now, is that the ores, they just lie on the surface now, so you can... So it's much easier to spot in the room distance. You don't have to run around picking up every single rock just and turning it over just to find out, you know, oh, it's just a rock. Let's get some height here. See what there is to see in this great world. Nothing that will keep us alive. How lovely is that? Well, might be something over there, but I think it's just flowers. Ah, there's something. Okay. Oh, a pig. Even better. 
Well, Pig, I would like to preserve you for later use in, in breeding experiments. But alas, I am my hunger. My food is completely depleted. Down to one javelin now. See what I mean about it being a little bit difficult now to... Uh, doesn't help that I spent all that time, time playing Terra Farmer Craft and didn't... Oh no, he went into... Oh no. Great. Jeez, he fell into a death pit. Where's my shovel? Can I at least collect his, uh, come on. Getting some lag here. Ah, there's his meat. Ha ha ha. All right. You can see we have what we call the meat explosion here. Let's get rid of everything we don't need. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't need dirt. Okay. Excellent. Actually, can I eat raw meat? No, it will not let me eat raw meat. All right, let's go home and cook this stuff up. Ooh, speaking of which, I forgot to mark home. I think it's over there to the left. Oh, yeah, where all the trees are, but I just... Oh, I haven't got any room. I just said... I just realized there's a crop over there to the right. But I don't have any room in my inventory, even if I were to pick it up, so... Let's get back to the shack. Ooh, I thought it was here. Apparently not. Oh, it's over there. Yeah, actually I can see it on the mini-map now. Oh yeah, and you'll notice I've got mob radar turned off on the mini-map. That seems a little cheaty to me. Just a tad. Okay, um... Let's see, what do I want to do here? Uh, let's just not be crazy here. All right. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Starving to death and your fire started, it won't work. There we go. You cook. Yeah, at least uh, the developers have slowed down the rotting a bit. It was really fast, and particularly rainfall would affect it. So if it was raining, uh, things would rot more quickly. Okay, come on now. Oh, I'm not getting eating sounds. I wonder why not. Okay. So, I don't know, I'm just going to sit here and cook up all this meat now, so I'll probably cut a little bit of this out. And then come back in. Okay, I've cooked up about half of it, and uh, and I've got it stored in these, uh, in these vessels right now. Uh, but as you can see, my fire just went out. What time of day is it? Yeah, I need more wood. So, let's apply our axe to one of these big babies here. Yeah, it'll probably take us two axes, maybe more than two axes to get through it. There we go. That's the first one. Might as well do a second one while I'm here. Yeah, so that pork, I mean, like I say, it'll 
it'll rot a little more quickly than we'd like, but still, that's gonna keep mind and body together for, uh, for the next, uh, probably for, well, probably at least for, it'll last at least a week. And there are things we can do to, to make it last longer, so actually, as long as I, we tend to all that, then, uh, probably we might even keep us for a month or so. Wow. Even two axes wasn't enough to get all this. That uh, should be enough, though. Hang on. Come on. Nope. Can't get those guys up there. Okay. Well, maybe that will let me uh, ex at least expand the digs a bit. Since we can use these now. Oh, actually we don't need that. do that and that that hmm need a couple more should do the trick, I hope. There we go. Second night and we're already like getting things nice and roomy. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually this is probably about enough for, uh, for the first episode. Um, oh, yeah, I just need to finish cooking up the, uh, cooking up the rest of this meat. So let's put a few of you guys in there. Get that started again, and I well, should be seeing some rotting. Yeah, okay, here we go. Now, if you look at down at the bottom there, it says decay, 0.2%. And 0.5% on that one, etc., etc. 0.6, whoo. So what you can do about that is uh, you can take a knife and cut it away. And that was 0.6%. Now you see it's, it's got no decay on it again, but it's no longer the full 160 ounces that it was. Hang on, I need to do this. And 160 ounces of any kind of food is the most that you can have. Um, so some of the things you can do is if it's if there's no if there's decay on it and you put it in your crafting grid with a knife it just removes the decay but once there's no decay on it if you put it in the graft crafting grid that splits it in half so this is half of what i originally had here and then this will be a, a yet again a half so now a quarter so you can make f finer slices if you want and conversely you can combine things so i have 39 79 39 here so i can put them here and combine them all back into one thing uh, it, so it all fits in one. So that's basically how you stack up food now, is you combine it in the crafting grid. But 160, 160 ounces is the max, so. Oh, I'm sitting here yakking, losing all this wood. But, um, is there anything else I should, I need to show? Uh, there's not much I can do with this hide yet. Oh, uh, so I said once I have a bed that I will, um, I uh, will uh, turn off mobs, go to peaceful mode. Uh, there are now two types of beds. There is a hide covered straw bed and plus the regular bed. The hide covered straw bed just lets you reset your spawn point. It doesn't let you sleep away the night. So that's not the one I'm talking about. If you know, Once I get that, I'll still, still have mobs on. It's when I get a real bed that lets me sleep through the night. And then that's when I'll disable the mobs. So I'm gonna call that a, the end of the first episode. I uh, hope you found it interesting. 
I I really like the changes that they've made. I mean, except for the Swiss cheese land everywhere. Uh, that's a little disconcerting. But uh, but I like the I like the decay now because it does it makes the food a lot more important. Now there is a little bit of micromanaging you have to do with all this decay and have to having to cut it away. But again, you know, if you really don't like that, you know, just move north. Uh, uh, you know, and that's another thing that um, that really starts to come out now with the changes that they've made is, like I say, in hot temperatures, your food rots faster in cold temperatures. So you might think, oh, I'll move into the north area and where it's nice and chilly and then my food will last longer. Yes, that's right. But all, but now when the winter comes, all your crops will pop out of the ground. So that means you have to like make sure you have enough food stored to last you through the winter and that it won't all rot away over winter. Whereas if you're in the tropics, you can grow food all year round. So that's a little less of an issue. So the there's a lot more trade-offs and I always find that makes the game a little, little deeper, more complex and more interesting. So, but anyway, this is my knife. I'll sign off now for good and, or for this episode at any rate. Oh, here come the zombies. And I uh, hope to see you back for the next one. Bye.